What is going on, All Terrain Nation? It's your buddy Dave here and Danny of All Terrain Nation. If you drive four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, or whatever you drive, this is the show for you. Because tonight, Danny, we are talking two-wheel drive, and it's kind of like, well, I guess one-wheel drive, essentially. One-wheel drive, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, and even one-wheel drive. That's right, man. This is your All Terrain Nation, and we are going to be talking about adventure bikes tonight, which is kind of... So, for the people that watch us on the Nissan show, man, the, obviously we talk a lot of cars over there and trucks, and then we, we want to do a lot of cars and trucks over here, except for we've never had a chance, Danny, to kind of talk about motorcycles. Like, you know, Nissan does a builder motorcycle, and, and a lot of, like, car and truck channels just refuse to talk about this stuff, and, dude, there is a big community out there for this stuff. Yeah, for sure, and I was I was really deep into it there for quite a few years basically before i got my red truck um but i i put uh almost twenty thousand miles on my uh holy crap klr 650 that's a lot of um, miles on a bike yeah and i i did it in like a year and a half i think wow (laughs) so i put i put more miles on my bike than i usually do on on cars um over that yeah over that time It, it, it was just one of those things man i fell in love with the culture with the ease of just packing you know i i'm kind of uh more prone to that that light duty just throw a couple you know all you have is this amount of space you can't overthink it you know you just put the bare basics in there and you go out and you you know you go out into the to the mountains or something like that and you camp out and you got what you got that's right um so it it, it was a cool cool experience and uh, i'm definitely going to get back into it at some point in time probably once my kids are a little bit older but uh yeah i love i love the whole adventure bike scene well you tore yours completely apart and rebuilt it too right yeah, it uh, it was a it was a good bike. It was an 08 uh, KLR 650, which is a very very basic uh, adventure bike. One, it's a very entry level bike, uh, single cylinder, so they call them a thumper. Um, 650 cc's, not a lot of horsepower in that bike. It was a little bit more torquey, but I mean, it wasn't a powerful bike to to say the least. But uh, and it was kind of like uh, not great at off road and not great on road, but it did everything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it it uh, did things. It did all the it did all the things decently. Um, burned a little bit of oil, um, but yeah, I, t- I tore it down. I did some I uh, did some maintenance things. The the doohickey mod, <laughs> um, a couple maintenance things. Uh, I think I put a pipe on it. I painted it all tan and got you know I got crash bars for it and some well, extra little peg I remember hand, peg I remember you it. in your motorcycle days because like I was like oh crap we lost Danny. Cause it was like, Oh yeah. It was when you had your white gen one, I believe. And like, you just all of a sudden disappeared off forums and stuff. And I was like, well, there went another one. We just lost another good guy. And, and, <laughs> and then when motorcycle breaks down, car guy comes back. Yeah. I, I got into it pretty deep, man. I was, uh, I was going on. So I, I went on a couple really big trips and, uh, you know, I drove it out to King of the Hammers one year with a buddy of my, my, my buddy actually bought a, an older version of that bike. Um, and we, uh, we had a lot of good, uh, good fun and, uh, there's something, there's something so appealing about just you and the road, you know, and, and you know, it's a very visceral feeling as far as controlling a bike. You know, it's all just mechanical, you know, it's, you're, it's even more than, you know, a stick shift, like an old stick shift car. It's like, you know, your, your cable, cable shifting stuff. And um, especially on that bike, cause it, you know, it's, it's very, very basic bike. Well, yeah, um, and, and if you're doing any kind of hill climbing and stuff, like there's no, there's no once you're in it, you're in it kind of thing with a motorcycle. There is no, oh, and, those, uh, and those things are heavy. I mean, all adventure bikes are heavy for off road use. I mean, mm-hmm. you have to really throw your weight around. Um, you know, the better rider you are, the better you can you can handle it off road. And you know, and but you don't you don't usually take adventure bikes like that unless you're it's extremely skilled um, on like single tracks or, or anything gnarly. You know, I, I did I did one like little hill climb um and it was pretty soft and just that you know i got a six gallon tank on the thing and going up i think it was six maybe seven something like that um going up some hill where it was soft and the the top weight of that thing going back and forth you know and you're stuffing a foot down and ah, and it's it's just a big heavy bike to control you you can't really stay up on top of stuff as as well as you would if you're flying around on you know just a bare bones dirt bike well frank b says danny if we were talking motorcycles i guess i can't use truculating tonight 
Yeah, <laughs> we're going to have to biculating. <laughs> well, you can use truculating real quick, Frank, because the first thing I want to get into, Danny, is uh, so I dropped some news on the Nissan Nation side of things, and we'll just talk. We're it, This ain't going to be a truck show, guys, but it is kind of news that we need to get into. So let me uh, let's go over here to YouTube, and uh, let me hit play on this video for a minute because it's on here in my studio. So wherever you're watching us around the globe, you know the drill. This is your Nissan Nation, and I'm your host, David Boyd. So, Motor Trend Magazine. Motor Trend. Wah, 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 wah. Once again, the big old school uh, auto magazines. This may be the first time Danny's hearing the this. wrong information, man. And you go, it's a head scratcher of why. They're like, they got to be first. Go, oh, we got to get the clicks. We got to get the clicks without any knowledge or uh, seems like knowing the product that they're trying to talk about. Because this week, Motor Trend Magazine confirmed that. That, which is from Nissan, says uh, that's a Frontier. Problem is, is uh, Motor Trend Magazine, all they did was take some pictures, which we had posted here on the channel, and uh, we talked about thoroughly. And I told you this was a Nissan Frontier globally, not U.S. spec. <laughs> all they did was quickly seen the back of the tailgate that said Frontier, and they said, here's your 2021 Nissan Frontier, United States. They said it. I'm going to post the article in just a minute where you can see the headline. And I find it a little bit ridiculous. Now, all right, so that's about all I'm going to get to. You guys want to watch the rest, you know you know where to find that video. Um, uh, Dan, what, before we, like I said, before we get into, uh, into motorcycles and stuff, so Motor Trend Magazine came out and said that, oh, that Navara, and it, yes, it is a frontier globally, not, not in the U.S. spec frontier. And they come out and blatantly was just like boldly said, this is your next frontier, the 2021 frontier United States. And that's a head scratcher, dude, to make the, 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 these, all these old motors or uh, all these old moto car or whatever. So I'm confusing all the topics now. They all want to be first to say something like and and motor trend and, and car and driver and all these places used to have weight behind it when they said something, dude, but there's, they're just losing any credibility. I think it yeah, I think I think it was just kind of uh, lazy journalism, if you if you ask me. I think it was. Here's some pictures. Of course, you know it says Frontier on the bottom. Let's not, you know that that is what it is. Let's you know write a write a piece, get it up in the in the thing, and do our thing. Um, I think it was. Uh, and I mean, you know, we're we're deep into it, so we know. Yeah. But at the same time, I think, um, you know, maybe maybe a little due diligence to find out what the deal was <laughs> with the two trucks. Um, would have been would have been better used. I mean, I'm not I'm not hating on Motor Trend. Motor oh, Trend, no. I've I've loved Motor Trend and everything that they've done. You know, for the longest time. But that's what I grew up on Motor Trend magazine, mm -hmm. um, and all their shows. I love them. But <clears throat> they uh, they should make sure that they're doing a little uh, the little little checking before they're you know posting up I pictures guess, and stuff. I guess stuff they uh, have no editors over there anymore. They just oh you're a journalist <laughs> and uh, here here's here's the keys How, to the website. Go do it. How about this, Motor Trend? If you don't like this, uh, maybe if you're going to write some Nissan stuff, send your uh, editors over to us so we can uh, maybe get them all spun up on what they're going to be writing. Well, um, what's so funny is when and, we – And you can give us a shout-out. When we dropped the, the picture of that Nismo Frontier, all these all these guys ran with it. It's like they don't even cross-check yeah. themselves anymore. They just yeah. – and, and who who came and hit us up? You know, only our friends really. Yeah. It, you know, is this real or whatever? Nobody hit us up. They just grabbed it and said, "Hey, this is what's been talked about." Yeah, but then when you use one of their pictures, I get a nice email saying, oh, "Hey, yeah. I yeah. you you didn't ask for permission," and you're like, "Yeah, and you didn't ask for my permission." So three letter three letter uh, YouTuber. We got. <laughs> oh. But anyways, that, I wanted to get in that just for a second, guys, to uh, get y'all's opinions of it. But that's not what we're here to talk about. But I was fired up about that, Dan, and I just wanted to kind of kind of mention it real quick and, and get your quick take on that um but like i said earlier this is motorcycles and this is something that uh uh well Ka uh cody's in here so uh we know we're gonna have yep. to talk a grom the scooter for a little bit right well, <laughs> <laughs> the scooter of motorcycles yeah. well that that and the 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 yamaha and the grom yeah but but danny this is your show because i i have i have no background like other than like dirt bikes as a kid like I, yeah I you're, tore you, you're not a adv guy at all like you just never yeah. dabbled your toes into it at all yeah and i and i mean i rode dirt bikes across county i guess but uh yeah, I did, yeah. i've never done i mean i've done street bikes but i've never got it like what you did was like you threw a backpack of stuff on and you went on what a couple week adventure one time right 
Uh, I went on a week adventure out to um, out to the Grand Canyon and and through you know quite a few states and or a, a couple states and we went down to Sedona and it was a big long adventure ride. Um, uh, CK Knife and Tool, um, what's up, bud? He had a 06 KLR, KLR. Said he'd love he'd love to get hey, back into sport riding. And if you guys don't know, go to over to our buddy CK Knife and Tool and go subscribe to his channel, man. Dude, yeah. dude's a excellent like a master builder of knives. <clears throat> yeah, he makes but, some real, and he's got a Titan. Yeah, if you're, uh, into but he, Titans. yeah, his channel's just not like about that. He's like always dropping some kind of cool thing, man. So go over and check his channel out. And uh, thank you for being a part of this because we met. Where did we meet him? T- the Titan Adventure. Yeah, exactly. That, that Nissan, um, hey, car or Motor Trend Nissan invited us to cover that. So uh, and we got yeah. that right. Anyways, but, anyways, uh, C- C- CK, uh, he made a <clears throat> he made a good point. Uh, he'd probably grab a Super Tenier or a KTM now, which. Um, if you let's kind of break this down. So for me, there's dual sport, which, you know, the, 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 the verbiage of, of all these different bikes is you could call these all dual sport. Um, I wouldn't call them all adventure bikes. Um, but let's just say that there's a dual sport, which is usually something that's like a dirt bike, like a, like a DRZ 400 that is street legal. That's mm-hmm. sold for our you know something that you could ride what it's basically like a a street 30 bike. minutes to a trail or something like that it's like a street bike that basically has flashers and stuff right or i well, mean it's, a motorcycle it's a dirt bike that, yeah yeah, it's a, yeah it's a dirt bike that has like flashers and a headlight um probably a bigger tank you know they're they're meant for driving on roads and you can actually ride those in some single track and stuff like that if you're a decent rider um i and then and if you if you just google um, dual sport you'll find those bikes there's some uh there's some 350s and kawasaki makes some um, yamaha makes like a 250 and stuff like that um and then there's adv adventure bikes which those are going to be there there's kind of a couple there's kind of like two variants of them um there's like the variant which um you'd see the klr 650 um you'll see the uh let's see here somebody was talking about it earlier uh rumesh was talking about um, the V-Strom 650, which I think now might be a little bit bigger. Let's see. The V-Strom now is, I think they, whatever, they, they make two sizes. But they, there's like a 650 or 700 size. The Tenier, yeah, the, the V-Strom has a 650 now. There's the Yamaha Tenier, which they have a 700 now. And then there's the Yamaha Super Tenier, which I think is an 1100 right around that. And I'm talking about engine size cc's Mm -hmm. you have bmw which bmw has quite a few different engine sizes now well Um, bmw my understanding is the it's the pinnacle of of these bikes right there's there's a couple that are the pinnacle ktm and bmw really have brought out the most luxurious and nicest um adventure bikes where and and that's kind of where i'm just going is you can have an adventure bike that is just set up for a road. You know, you're not going to take that thing off road, but it sits up high. You know, you you can you can pack a bunch of big bags on it. The way that you sit, you know, the, the your posture is up high, mm-hmm. and it's kind of more in that that dirt bike style stance. Whereas it's not like a cruiser bike with your feet up front. It's not as a um, street bike where your you know feet are kind of back and you're leaning forward. Um, so BMW has everything from the 1200 the GS bikes, which are 1250s. Yeah, they have the the thousand, the nine hundred. I'm sorry, the eight fifty, the seven fifty, and now a three ten, which is coming out. Um, and those range from twenty thousand dollars or twenty one thousand dollars down to um, fifty seven ninety five. <laughs> you know, and uh, the BMW I think is probably quite a bit lighter in the uh, or not lighter. It's it's a heavy bike. It's not nearly as off road friendly as you would you know want an adventure bike to be it's 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 really made for you know you could take it on dirt like dirt roads and stuff like that but um it's and then yeah it's it's a little bit more made for the road you know maybe maybe rough roads and stuff it'll be nice on rough roads or whatever but it's still kind of a cruiser but the you know the the ability to take it on rough roads and stuff like that is is kind of a nice feature of having something like that um, and that's the Super Tenier, which is the big, the big uh, Yamaha. Um, again, that one is also 
it's it's a really big bike and that's the thing is you get into the big big bikes the ones that are 1200 cc's the um 1100 cc's etc that's a big motor and then usually they have big gas tanks because these bikes are you know are made so that you sit on them and you ride them 300 right. miles a day or something like that um you know or even more 600 miles whatever however strong your <laughs> your constitution is. <laughs> um but they're they're bikes that you really don't want to spend too much time in the dirt on if it's you know anything more than a fire road or something like that um they do have a lot of cool stuff like um like abs and you know suspension dampening control where they have off roads you know they have a bunch of different settings um so those are kind of like the the big boys in the in the group of adventure bikes the ktm 1290 um just a phenomenal machine it's a beautiful beautiful bike i do think that that the old uh, i think it was the 990s or whatever i think i think they had a little bit better look to them but i will say ktm just kills it with this futuristic like robot face look that they always put on their bikes and i i think it's like well just the coolest looking bikes well so and and like i said i'm i'm not stupid to motorcycles but as far as like in the world of it like i'm a child of the 80s like we i I remember honda was the 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 125s and and so on with the of dirt bikes were kind of that and the adventure bikes there was a couple there but mostly when i was a kid either you wanted a street bike or or you know, uh, just a, a strictly dirt bike. So I remember when those those KTM started coming in, like looking so crazy. And and yeah. I, I I don't follow motorcycles a ton, so I you know, and I, I'm being very honest about it. But I do remember seeing these all of a sudden out of the blue, going, "What what is what is this? Like it's so crazy looking, man." Oh, for sure. I and when I when I started dipping my toes in, I got my KLR, um, and it was you know my wife was very like on the fence and, I, and she finally acquiesced <laughs> and I got my bike. And then I was like looking at bikes, you know, and I'm like, Oh my gosh, this new KL that, that KLR is like something to behold. You know, right. it's just the, 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 or I'm sorry, not the KLR, the KTM was something to behold. The KLR, the KLR kind of has a little, like it has a little bit of a bird face, but the, the KLR <laughs> and, is a lot. It's been in the lineup for a long time, right? Oh, it's yeah. There's been basically two versions of the KLR since like the dawn of time um and the military actually used a diesel version of the klr um for like some quick response force stuff and like uh, i want to say it was the marines or whatnot was this but gi joe all of a sudden man diesel like... version of it and it, it, it's a pretty cool bike again for what it was and some people you know bore them out to like 800 cc's or whatever it was but yeah um it it, it really is it's kind of it is what it is um it's fun it's there they're, you can get them for dirt cheap they're mm. everywhere um but yeah so uh you know, looking up at the, and here's a story for you. So when I was on my big long trip to the Grand Canyon, I went with two guys on BMWs, and I had my KLR. And the KLR 650, you know, it cruised at like 70, no problem. But you get up above that, and it's like it's really like. Ah! <laughs> and my particular year was known for burning oil a little bit more. Well, those guys on their bikes when we got way out into the open road you know up in utah and all that we were cruising at like 90 miles an hour and it's windy and stuff like that and so i'm kind of all over the road and you know my bike's just not it's not as smooth or whatever and i'm flying behind these guys kind of drafting and uh and we get to the next stop and i go out and i check my oil and mind you i think that i, I can't remember exactly now it's been so long since i had it i think the thing only took like two and a half quarts of oil or something like that maybe and i was like a full quart low of oil. <laughs> and so i had to start putting like and I, I i paid closer attention to it but i had to start putting like half a quarter or that time i put like one and a half quarts but i started putting a half a quart of oil in every day just because i was burning that oil up so bad um it was a piston ring problem but but still it like it was just you know it's just this beater single cylinder thumper um but well, and, and some my of buddy, these, some of these bikes, Danny, are so simple. Like uh, people can rebuild them fairly simple, right? Yeah, the it's the earlier stuff for sure. I mean, and a lot cheap. of the newer stuff is is you know they have everything now. Um, the new, if you if you look at the like the new um, Africa Twin, and um, you know it's it's got a like it's it's got a it's got Apple CarPlay with like you know <laughs> right. it's got every it's got more stuff than our new Frontiers have. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> it's it's really cool that's and the, you know they the africa twin i remember when they brought that out which was uh or something like that 
but the African twin had gone away. Honda makes it, um, and it was a this legendary bike bike of Dakar, um, and it was just just this beautiful. And they and they had it the red, white, and blue, and all these guys rode it, and it was just this big legendary bike. And they just recently bought it back, um, and uh, like I was like, oh man, I wish I could have bought that bike when it came back. You know, it was, it was I was waiting for it to come out, and they it's a it's a really 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 nice bike, um, but I'm not sure. Oh, so. And this is jumping back into the story. So on that long trip, um, my buddy let me buy, uh, ride on, or we, we swapped bikes for a little bit because it was freezing cold. My buddy had heated grips. I didn't because he had a nice, GS. He had a, nice. he had a GS 1200. So I hopped on his bike and, you know, that thing has like almost three times the horsepower as my Kalar. <laughs> or probably, probably double the horsepower. And he had heated seats, heated grips. And I'm cruising there like, what have I been doing? And cause my hands were getting freezing. That's a big deal when you're riding uh, sure. motorcycles, you know, sure. um, the heated grips, I didn't realize were such a beautiful, amazing thing. And I oh, immediately yeah. put them on once I got back from that trip. Um, but I was just sitting there cruising and I just had power for days. His windshield was bigger, you know? And I'm like, Oh my gosh, dude, I could just like fall asleep on this thing right now. And then like, I had got warmed up and he, you know, our next stop, he's like, all right, man, let's switch back. And I'm like, Oh man. <laughs> cause like, you know, you barely had the throttle twisted on mine. It was just like this vibration and just this, yeah. ah, and yeah, just you, freezing you've, you've and t- trying to buckle down behind the windscreen. Does, <laughs> did yours have like the thumb, the thumb throttle or was it at the handle throttle? Cause I think some of these, uh, it, it's, it's a handle throttle, but I had, I had like a little clip on thing that, that oh, okay. gave it a little bit of, but yeah. Um, and that could, gets tiring in itself. Like just sitting there keeping that damn thing twisted. And yeah. 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 I had a little, I had like a little thing that went on thumb pad or whatever that okay. um that allowed a, a little bit of ease on on the the wrist so you could just kind of relax right um cordetti's oh. here oh cordetti definitely has some motorcycle experience we gotta get jeff on the he's show got an sometime. entire channel yeah he's got an entire channel i think dedicated to some of his motorcycle yep. stuff chain drive versus shaft drive yeah uh bmw's all have their their shaft drive motorcycles too that's a, a big deal well, Danny, let's um, let's uh, let's look at some of these because mo- I've got a list here of uh, like yeah. top ten list of bikes, and I kind of want to go through them with you because I'm curious about. Once again, I don't know anything about this is Danny's territory, and I kind of want to know about these things. All right, so uh, this uh, website is uh, highconsumption.com, and this is this is a top ten list, and it's a uh, 2019. I didn't want to go too. With especially with COVID right now, I couldn't tell you what ever got launched and what hasn't, but it's the top ten uh, best adventure motorcycles, Dan. And uh, let's see who the author was here uh, by Chris West, and this was uh, August of 2019, so about a year old. But motorcycles don't change that rapidly, right? So, um, not. I mean, it's it's just like it's like cars. Yeah. So I mean, are- some did. Some do and some don't. You know what I'm saying? Right. So first up here is a BMW G310GS, Danny. And I, I don't expect yeah, you that, to know everything about these, but I'm just curious your take on a couple of these. Um, that was that was kind of a new um, a new thing that they popped up. I think they're trying to get down into they're, they're trying to hop into that that smaller market that that real. I mean, this is probably one of the least expensive bikes that they offer. Um, and it seems a lot more like a supermoto bike to tell you the truth. Right. Um, for those of you that aren't hundred percent familiar with supermoto, usually it's like you see a dirt bike that has street tires put on it and the, you know, the suspension, um, change to run street courses, you know, and they'll, they'll drift them and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but this seems kind of like in that fashion, it's got a really cool look to it. Um, I suppose you could turn it into a, uh, a, um, uh, an adventure bike if you wanted to, but I think this is really geared towards um a little bit more of that uh yeah yeah, i don't know i i mean i it could go either way it it definitely is a kind of a cool bike um let's see what this says here so it says bmw is an industry staple when it comes to manufacturing of capable adventure bikes and the company's g310 uh gs is has more than enough utility to solidify its place on our list the bike's futuristic design uh, rambunctious orientation and powerful liquid cool single cylinder four stroke engine are the epitome of hybrid reliability. Thanks to its generous 310 or 313 cc capacity, uh, the six speed uh, mesh gearbox, lightweight tubular steel frame, blah blah blah. So yeah, like you were saying, this is kind of a cheaper bike, but it you know 
I don't know anything BMW. That's... Seven, 71 MPGs. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. is pretty cool. Which... Um, yeah, it's, it's a cool addition to the lineup. Uh, I'd love to go try and ride, see what it's all about, you know. Um, I, I just don't have much as far as experience and understanding of it just because i don't you know i don't i don't really know where it lines up it's in like, like i said yeah. it's a newer newer bike and i'm not sure you know how how adv is it how uh supermoto is it kind of you know is it real street or is it uh does it have some good chops in the dirt or something like that if you threw some dirt tires on it right um let's see so also um let's see the honda x R 650L. Now this is a, this was as a kid. This is a classic. I yes. remember this style of, of motorcycle as a kid. So the fact uh, that there that this is still like something is pretty wild because, I mean, that 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 bike has been one of the number one and I'll call it a dual sport. That has been one of the number one dual sports for the longest time as far as something that you could hop on and ride trails for seven hours. You know, if you're gonna ride from Baker to Vegas or something like that or you know, really, really long trail rides where <clears throat> you fill the gas tank up and you just go. Um, that's a that's a really cool bike to uh, that that I know of, and that's kind of like one step down from like the KLR as far as. Um, well, well, Honda used to kind of capability own this on the road, though, right? Like the Honda and Kawasaki were the guys that I remember. Uh, Suzuki was always more of a street bike when I was a kid. Yeah, uh, but but. Kawasaki or Honda, when I was a kid, was kind of the bikes that you always kind of, you know, I saw them on the the stadium racing when they used to do that stuff. And and Honda, it was Honda and Kawasaki seemed like they always won those. Yeah, Yamaha was in there pretty good as well. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Um, yeah. But that's 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 right in there. That's right in there with the dual sports and the, um, I mean, back in back in um, the nineties, Yamaha was murdering it with their with their uh, dirt bikes. Um, they had the 426s. I just remember the 426 that my buddy had. It was just a monster when it first came out. Right. I remember riding that thing and just bl- it blew my mind. I said, "This you can't have this much power." <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, when those things popped out. But anyways, um, the 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 XR650 is it, it's just a throwback machine. Everything you know, you look at it and you think uh you think of that movie Rad. Yes. You know, like the it, yeah. it's, it's a time machine to uh to Rad. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. Um, or and, some of those, you know, some of those movies back then. And seven grand, you know, kind of, you know, still seem fairly affordable if you want a, a kind of adventure bike. I mean, for for a really like bulletproof dual sport, and and again, I wouldn't even call this an adventure bike. I, I call this a dual sport. Yeah. Um, for for a really tried and true bike that there's probably parts everywhere that are dirt cheap for, that would be a really really great bike if you're really looking to do a lot of long distance you know, dirt adventures where you're just, you know, maybe ride to the trail and then dirt adventures the entire time. Right. So next up is the Triumph Tiger 800. And uh, once again, I I show my limited knowledge of motorcycles because Triumph always was like, to me, it was like a street bike company. I never knew that they did kind of adventure Yeah, well, for the longest time, yeah, for the longest time, they were like cafe style bikes and stuff like that. Um, that's where you would see them. And they they started dabbling with with the Tiger a while back. When When I was looking at the Tigers back, um, when I was into bikes, they, they, they've come a long way in their adventure bike look. Right. But if you look at the Triumph Tiger and you look at that GS310, it is, it is just like the same bike. <laughs> <laughs> it is ridiculous how close they have, they have modeled it after a lot of the GS. And the GS really has done so much with their, with their duckbill look and their kind of, um, how that you know they've been they bmw's had their bikes out for forever yeah um so a lot of guys started or a lot of companies started um doing a lot of that look where ktm kind of went away from that to like their very cyborg um alien face look um, right the, the duck bill look has has popped up all over the scene um with kawasaki maybe, with, uh, maybe it's all these guys that their girlfriends are doing the duck face so they just got to have a bike mm. that sort of reminds them of their girlfriend duck right? face bikes yeah yeah but uh, this but Triumph... Triumph makes a very, a very good fast bike. Uh, I don't have a ton of experience with them though. Right. Um, from one or two guys that I talked to, it's a pretty cool bike. But well, it again, better... very for... little experience with them. For twelve grand, like the jump up here was uh, pretty incredible. And of course, you expect that with a Triumph bike. Like you expect it to be a little more pricey. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Let's see. Next up is the Suzuki V Strom one thousand ABS. Yeah, this this, this bike just looks like sex, man. Like pure sex right here. This thing is is sharp looking bike. The V Stroms are really cool, and it was the KLRs and the V Stroms kind of battled a little bit for that that um I don't want to say it's a low end, but affordable price range. All right, 
Um, so V-Stroms, you could, and, and this is the new version of the V-Stroms. For a long time, the V-Stroms didn't look quite so aggressive, again, with that, that duckbill look, that, mm-hmm. that BMW GS look. Um, for the longest time, they had a, they were they were a little bit more dopey looking, if you ask me. They didn't right. have the best look as far as an ADV bike, but they did really well. Um, they had really good motors, a lot more power usually than the KLR, um, a little bit more of a road bike version. Right. Um, you again, you you know, they, and they had two versions where they had the V Strom 1000, and then they had the, I believe they had the 650 back in the day, or well, they still they still do. They they have the the thousand and the 650, and then there's some, uh, you know, like three or four different variants of that, whatnot. You know, adventure right. the XT, the ZX, whatever. <laughs> um, but V Strom is definitely pushed pushed it a little bit harder in the duckbill, the adventure bike look to make it to make it a lot more aesthetically pleasing. And I'm sure they've done a lot of stuff um, as far as, you know, they, they've integrated a lot of the electronic controls um, usability, but it's also a pretty, a, a lot more uh, affordable bike than some of the high end adventure bikes. So you can get into a V Strom um, at a much better price than you could. If you were, you know, if you wanted a GS, uh, but you can't afford a GS, <laughs> then a V Strom, <laughs> is a uh, is a great bike to go with it's they got a lot of uh a lot of history behind them well and this one uh thousand uh, thirteen thousand dollars like that's one thing with motorcycles when i was a kid i remember dirt bikes you could get 500 to a thousand dollars new like a 125 like and I, I know that's dating me just a little bit but like the price of of motorcycles has went kind of nuts a little bit right dan it, it of course it has because you know you, they just i mean obviously there's inflation and everything's gone nuts but you know when you get a motorcycle that has um you know like all the electronic all the things you know it's got it's got um dynamic stability control in it you know it's got right. abs it's got you know it's got a touch screen with you know buttons and whiz weezobs and jim jams and stuff <laughs> it's got all the things in it that you may or may not need, and you can go, you know, sky high with price on some of these. Right. Um, to give you an idea where the V-Strom sits, um, the Africa Twin, which is the, I mean, it's a Honda, you know, you think Honda is a, a, you know, middle of the road brand, but the, the Africa Twin, it's at about 17000 almost 18000 um, for their Adventure wow. Sport ESD DCT. Now, that's the high-end version. Right. Um, but, um, you know, and then and again, the GS, the high-end versions in the 20s, uh, where you can get the lower end version of, of a GS um, a little bit lower, <clears> but um, you know the the V Strom is is has always been kind of the every man's ADV bike, um, right. and I think that's where they like to be. Um, they don't have a massive amount of competition in there, so um, it's a it's a good bike. Well, next up is the KTM 790 Adventure R. Now this is this is the we're starting to get into kind of the bikes that I've seen a lot more. Yes. Um, the KTM bikes from, from large to small, um, really are just pinnacles of, uh, pinnacles of, of motorcycle awesomeness. Uh, in maybe I'm biased or maybe I just love the KTMs. I rode one one time and I was like, this is, this is out of control, dude. This is amazing. Um, it's just, uh, their styling is amazing. Their power is out of control. Um, See, and that's the 790, and and this this kind of goes up against the the BMW. BMW has their um their let's see, it's a 650. Let me let me pull this back up just so I have the good information. They have their their 850 and their 750, and so this is kind of going up against those bikes. I do think the the KTM just has so much better chops in the dirt. I think it's a much better dirt vehicle. Um, so. I think that that's a it's it's a rad bike and this is that's a you know if you wanted to get a bike that's that's got chops in the dirt but you can still ride it for a while and it has some has some comfort that's really top of the line that's an awesome bike to get I mean right. I would I would never scoff at somebody picking up a bike like that well so so but but how did KTM kind of come to be the the bike I because it's a brand I'd never heard of till the two thousands uh, I think that's what a, I think that's what happened is I think they. Uh, is it I just they know. found a niche I don't, and just went with it? Well, I don't know too much about KTM. I ju- I know it's a it's a European company. I, I can't remember if it's German or whatever. 
um but they they make they, they came out with some really good bikes and um i think that they're that it's it's a more of a high-end product i think they spend a lot of time with their tech and their um and their product as far as you know fit and finish and quality um and so i think that's what put you know keeps them up at the top and as well as like their design on all their bikes i mean if you even that picture of that you posted uh um that thumbnail or whatever we have um is a ktm and i don't know if you can pull up dave a, a ktm 990 or a 1290 can you pull up a picture of a uh, yeah. KTM 1290? Yeah, let me let me get out chance? of this just a second. Because I just want to show off these bikes, just because I'm, again, I'm I'm a little uh, I'm a little biased towards uh, towards K KTM styling. KTM what? M90. Uh, tw 1290. Uh, 12... Let's see if we can find something here. All right, let's see if this works. There we go. How about that? Let's see. So Wait 2020 the... KTM 1290 Super Super Duke R is eighteen thousand, basically seven hundred dollars, and that is one uh, crazy not... looking bike. <laughs> yeah. So so this isn't an adventure. It's not an adventure bike, but the the like the KTM's known for their Dukes, which are kind of like sh stripper bikes and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But they just have some really wild, and that's about the same motor that they put in the the um the because there's a 1290 adventure, so it's the same motor, just different. Uh, different stuff um well, let me see if I can pull it up real they quick. have yeah see if you can pull up the adventure bike it, the the 1290 adventure bike is just super oh there it is adventure super R. wild yeah all right all right let's see here I, I just think of when i when i see the front of that i think of um that new show with the robot um oh the robinsons oh, oh gosh, yeah show? Uh, lost in space you know what i'm saying yeah, lost in space. That's what I think of when there I see that go. front of that. Uh, um, but it's if you look at it, it has this really strong dirt bike chops to it. You can really tell with the front fork um, and how it doesn't. It's it's not kind of overboard with all the fairings everywhere and stuff like that. If you lay, lay that bike on its side, it's it's not gonna lose as much <laughs> as if as if you lay a BMW on the side. You know, you gotta right. have that feel to it. Um, and they really, uh, they really put some, some cool stuff into the, these bikes. Um, and they're, they're super, super heavy duty. And they, I think they have a little bit more off-road chops in their large bike, um, than a lot of the, uh, others. I've seen some guys whip these things around in, mm -hmm. um, very extreme off-road scenarios. I mean, of course they're pros, but, um, a, a lot of the reviews are usually like, I would never think a bike that this size would do what i did with it you know right um, well i'm looking so... at the the digital dash in this thing right now i don't know if you can see it just yet or not danny but um it's freaking crazy this digital dash in this thing man yeah they, it's super cool stuff um but you know I, again i think i'm i'm super biased but uh i i always i always have an uh perchant perchant i think is the word <laughs> a pen, penchant for the ktm um, they're styling and uh but you know what if we're talking about that and, and dave why don't, we, why don't you go back to the uh why don't we hop back to the list all right i know, I know we i'd love to just drool over this thing for four hours but let's hop back to the list because there's some other mentions that, all right next um, up when honda compared. honda africa twin crf yeah, 1000 that's, l that's the one that i was talking about this thing has huge history chops in the dakar um a lot of tech went into this when it came out it was it had a lot of stuff that that was um kind of state of the art and really just well placed and well well done for a bike um dan spallinger actually has one of these the guy that has the uh, nismo stuff racing frontier right. rally truck um and he said it's a he said it's a, just a, a blast to drive um again you know it's a it's a big bike um thousand cc bike and throwing it around the uh around the dirt isn't the most fun as far as like getting into some heavy dirt stuff but um this this bike i love the styling it has some of the throwback look that 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 the, the dakar bike had back then right um, um and, and cool colors on the thing and in like it or not like you gotta kind of sh they gotta look crazy too yeah so next up is the yamaha that. super super tenere. tenere yeah hold on i'm gonna look at some of these uh comments uh dirt bike channel my buddy australia rides a tenere 701 
Um, yes, this is something that I wanted to talk about. The Tanir. Um, so that's the Super Tanir, and now they have a Tanir 700, I believe it is. And this is something that me and Cody saw at uh, King of the Hammers, which it's a, it's 689, but I think they just call it a 700. Usually they just round up. Um, but what a fun bike. To, like, I just sat on it, and I said, wow, this bike's got chops, dude. Right. Um, this is very similar as far as design as we just saw at the KTM Adventure, that big adventure bike. Um, but it looks and feels a lot like, um, you know, a, a much smaller, uh, off-road <clears throat> style bike. I think Sup- the soupy says it's 10 or a 10, ten or I always said ten maybe it's ten Uh, so we'll call it the ten since soupy sucks set us, set us straight. Um, well, let's see here. But that looks like a big away. bike though. Like it's it a- is that that's that's so the two super tenere um is is a big bike i wouldn't do too much off-road in that thing mm-hmm. um other than you know i mean it, it is still pretty good um it's very similar to the big gs i don't think it has quite the chops as the klr off-road mm-hmm. um i think it might be kind of in between the klr and the big gs as far as off-road capability um but it's the the 700 is where my like real like oh wait this is a cool bike i think i would be if i was gonna buy one i'd i'd probably pick up that 700 right um i think that would be a really cool bike to to go out and um and play around with you know maybe go camp and you'd take it on some some dirt roads and stuff like that mojave road or something like that right so next up we got the ktm 1290 super adventure r which is like the like the other the other bike what just a little less power i think is what it says here um so we'll move on to uh, the next crazy bike bmw r1250 gs adventurer now this this bike looks mean man the the bmw is i mean it's kind of the pinnacle of adventure bikes it's been around since the dawn of time it seems like it was it's been one of the most popular um one of one of the most popular bikes worldwide as far as an adventure bike i think bmw um was very um, instrumental in kind of creating this this market um, and this this niche of, of adventure bikes. Mm-hmm. Um, the GS is they you know they had the little 650 GS Dakar. You see a lot of guys running those for the longest time. Um, they did really well, but uh, you know you used to have be able to have the the 1200 and the 650 um, little adventure bikes, and those were you know those were what BMW offered. Now they have you know. 10 different versions of or whatever and everything in between which is kind of how they 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 go they they do things <laughs> um but like i said dude you and you can get this bike with every you can get with plug-in seat heaters and you know you plug in your vest that heats and grip right. heaters and you know it's it, again it's it's a shaft drive um abs it's got all the bells and whistles you could possibly think of um and it's a comfy comfy bike to ride in um, you know, it's good seating position, good sweep back on the handlebars. Um, I would, I would love to go <clears throat> test one of these new ones to see how powerful they are. Cause I, I rode a, you know, quite a bit older one. One thing you, you could, you could crank on the freeway and you could bring the front tire up a little bit. Nice. Um, it's just, you know, power for days. Now this, um, this super smooth as well. Ducati, uh, Ducati, Ducati, geez, I'm going country over here. Uh, the Ducati, uh, Multistrada, uh, 1260 Enduro, this bike looks like it just wraps around you, man. Like, like you don't ride, like yeah. the bike rides you. <laughs> yeah. And again, I think this is, they call it an Enduro, but I think Ducati, um, I think they're trying to get into the Enduro scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, I don't, I don't know. I don't know the, the chops of this one off road. Um, I, I don't have, uh, again, I've been out of the market for a while, uh, other than just chatting it here and there. But uh, Ducati has always been known for the street bike, so right. I think this might be more of a touring bike than a than a real enduro. But you know, don't quote me on that. That's just my initial look at it. That's what that's my feel for it. You well, know, it looks for, a little bit more like a tour, like a for twenty four thousand, dude. It better it better do something because that's well, a lot I mean, of money. Well, it's, you're getting a Ducati motor and a Ducati frame, and a, you're getting a Ducati. It's a it's a hell of a vehicle. Oh you know yeah, what I'm yeah. It's a. It's, uh, it's, I I I would not be wanting to put that in the dirt personally. Right. I would love to take it around some corners though. You know what I'm saying? Right. No, I'm I'm there with you definitely about that. I uh, so guys, that was kind of a, a top ten list of of things that you know. Once again, 
just throwing some bikes out. Like bikes are so unique, much like each brand of car and truck. Like there, you can go down the rabbit hole of just you know enduro like versus you know dirt bike and like you were saying. And but overall, it's it's about the adventure with a bike, man. And it's more mm. like people love shifting cars. Like like I've seen the truck guys go nuts that nobody's really offering a manual transmission in a truck anymore. But yet. Like if you want that manual more connected to the road than anything, a motorcycle is where it's at. If you want to be so connected to the vehicle and the road, yeah. And even now, I, th- I, I don't quote me on this. I'm pretty sure that Yamaha Yamaha has like a clutchless shifting system now, and I think it, some of the bikes have that where it's you don't even have to use a clutch. It's kind of got like an automatic clutch or something like that. Right. Th- that's neither here nor there. I may be totally off on that. <laughs> out of my ass. Uh, but I I seem to remember saying seeing something like that. Somebody somebody uh somebody Google that stuff and uh and set me right or wrong. But the, the the visceral experience of I mean I remember coming over this mountain and there was this brand new road and it was kind of like the Dragon Dave. It was this brand new road. Nobody was on it, and we were just rolling through this mountain just back and forth. And you know the the weather was perfect. And we were just rolling through this twisty road of this brand new road that they had just laid down. And there was something so connecting about, you know, shifting gears, up shifting, down shifting, hitting brakes and and just laying it through these turns. And, you know, it, all you're thinking about is just cruising that that road. And it was so, so much fun, you know, just one 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 you're one with the machine. Um, and it was uh, it was just the most brilliant experience of of automotive slash motorcycle feels that i've ever had uh and you know i always anytime i get on a bike i it it immediately you know you 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 have your helmet on you have your jacket on your gloves you're geared up and you you feel like you're kind of like sitting down and you all of a sudden you're going and you're locked in and you're it, it reminds me of like when i saw tron for the first time you know or the first time you 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 know you put on all your your uniform to go play your first baseball game. You're like, mm-hmm. you get into this mindset. You're, you're like prepped and you're ready. Yeah. You've got all your things. Um, and that's kind of like what it is for, to be like on a motorcycle, you know, you're locked into this experience and, and it's just so freeing. It's really freeing if you pull out in front of a car too, like that's, that's mm. pretty freeing. Um, yeah, that's... <laughs> you know, I, and it trips me out. I see, always see, and I'm, I'm very motorcycle dude, man. I'm, I'm very pro ride whatever you want but i do see a lot of these groups from time to time like like bitching and fussing that oh you know cars they just gotta really watch out for us and then it's like as soon as i see somebody that with their bumper sticker i see the dude on the motorcycle just whipping through everywhere and i'm like okay guy let's let's, uh choose (laughs) our definitely there's definitely some people that shouldn't be on motorcycles i i know a specific person that's crashed like six times in the last two years i'm like (laughs) listen man I, i get it i love motorcycles too but you sir Oh yeah. Are going to die. Oh yeah. We had, I had a kid that worked for me one time, went out and bought whatever the <laughs> latest Suzuki little crotch rocket was 1100 CC, mm-hmm. you know, super powered. Like, like you hit the throttle and hang on. Death trap. Yes. Yep. And it really was two weeks and he had put it under a guardrail and, and huh. then, then he did something else to it. And then he called me over, Hey, could you help me rebuild this? And I get over there and it just, everything shattered about the bike. And I'm like, look, man. And he's like, well, you know, I financed this thing for five Classic. years or five years or whatever and ended up the bike got repossessed because the dude just couldn't afford to fix the thing and really he just destroyed the bike but but like bikes to me like you were saying you're they're definitely something that that you get it's a process it's not something you just grab your keys and you just run out there and do like like if you're even if you're a street rider like you should wear the proper attire i get tired of seeing that's that's the one thing that like every time i got on my bike dude pants and a jacket and boots well, dude um, i see I people in crocs time, i did <laughs> i did ride my bike down to the store one time to get some beer with some sandals on <laughs> but it was about three blocks yeah so. <laughs> yeah well the, when they say you're the most prone to accidents five miles away from home danny so mm-hmm. but but i do I, I see people i see people it just in shorts and, and crocs and uh-huh. the weirdest stuff and i'm like god you're yes you everybody should be watching out for you a little extra but you got to be a smart rider too yeah, I, I laid my bike down one time, and I was so happy that I had the, the crash bars on the bike, for one, because the bike didn't get messed up. Um, and then, two, I had, you know, big, thick uh, adventure climb uh, climb motorcycle pants and, you mm-hmm. know, a big 
<clears throat> thick shoulder pads and stuff in my in and elbow pads and stuff. So when I went down, it you know it, it scuffed up my pants. I mean, yeah. I was bummed because they were like hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> But at the same time, I was like, no big deal. I stood the bike up and, you know, went on went on about my day. But right. uh, if I had regular pants on, it would have ripped through my pants. I put on probably a terrible, terrible skin. Oh, dude, I, I delamination. Used, <laughs> I've laid motorcycles down on pavement so many times it's not even fun. I'm I don't know how I have skin on my arm and stuff because I, as a kid I was completely stupid and really like my parents. My dad was a motorcycle rider, but. Like they, you know, it was a different generation. They just said, here, go do it. You'll learn. Yeah, and, for sure. And so, so as we wind this one down, guys, so one of my, let's see, 10 to 14 years old, I had a, a Honda, this is not a fun motorcycle thing, but I had a Honda 50 CC gyro. And I don't know if, oh, yeah, I don't dude, know if those you, things are sweet. I don't know if you know <laughs> what the gyro was. It was a three wheeled scooter, basically. Yep. It had the worst basket on the front. Like it had a basket, <laughs> like it, it, it was my thing to prove to my parents, like, Hey, you know, if he's responsible, they didn't put, I think they paid like a hundred bucks for this thing from somebody. And, and I wore, dude, I wore the tires bald on this thing, dude. I was drifting before it was cool. Cause you could take nice. that thing cause the back wheels were planted and it would, yeah. it would gyroscope. So you could lean it and, and dude, I would drift around corners and stuff. <laughs> and, and I lost the, the back brakes went out on this thing. So it really became a death trap because I would be riding in the rain and you touch that, that front brake dude. And it was going to <laughs> boom and you were on the nice. ground. But dude, Danny, you'd love this dude. I thought that was a dirt bike. Basically I would take, we yeah. had these, we had these jumps and I mean, dude, you could get five to eight feet in the area. And this jump, I would take that little scooter dude. And just, it was the, probably the goof, it. dude, it was the just goofiest thing. Sunda. <laughs> That's right. It was the goofiest thing ever because you you can imagine this white basket, like this schoolgirl basket on the front. I of imagine this thing. you with a big old mullet, like a tank top. <laughs> oh wait, so I got a picture of this. Some thing. Military boots. <laughs> da- here, Danny. Danny, let me pull up a picture of this thing. So I'm gonna let you uh, let you control the. Oh please. This is hilarious. I have to oh, sh- since Dave. we're talking motorcycles, this has to be shown. <laughs> Let's see if I can find it quickly. Uh, but but dude, I I ended oh. up breaking this thing in half. Because oh, yeah. I I jumped it so much it, because I, I wanted a dirt bike and this was as close as well, I was. They didn't have a whole lot of suspension going on until oh. those small little fifties uh, and stuff like that. Those things were just meant around to bounce bounce around a uh, campsite, basically. Right, <laughs> for the right. Kids. Yeah, it was something you put on the back of your motorhome and just sort of got you from A to B. Yeah. Uh, oh gosh, let me. I got a quick. I got to find this thing, Danny. What do you have? Some kind of cool, fun kid story of a motorcycle. Yeah, I had a, we had a three wheel when I was a kid, a three wheeler, and I was super little, you know, like barely be able to. I mean, I was like, I don't know, I'm probably seven or something like that. My brother put me on the three wheeler, and they had built, a, and I didn't have a ba- big backyard. I just had right. a regular old backyard, um, and we had a treehouse, and the treehouse had a deck, and it had like four by fours circling the treehouse with a deck on it, and my and they built a uh, a ramp in the middle of the backyard. My, my two older brothers of course oh, you know and they were they were jumping off of it and you'd have to jump off of it and you'd have to basically slam on the brakes right afterwards right well so they they put me on i was like i want to do it they're like all right dude you know they put the helmet on me and i'm like all right here we go so i just gassed it you know i had the little thumb throttle it's just a really small three-wheeler right but i flew off that thing and instead of hitting the brake when i landed i hit the gas and I <laughs> ran straight i ran straight into the uh the four by four that was holding that little deck up for our tree house and I busted it clean and half with my head. <laughs> all right, Danny, I, fa- I found the picture, buddy. All right, all right. Let's see if I can... I was okay, by the way. Oh, I have a hard head. Um, yeah, well, we all... There's so many stories of, like, defying death, basically, you know? All, of... I, all I remember is my parents being pissed at my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the brothers' fault, right? Yeah, well, they never should have put me on that thing. All right, so I'm quickly editing this before we wrap this up. So you oh, got Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> is that actually you? Yeah, it's actually me, dude. Oh. That should never be jumped, bro. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. But I didn't have a dirt bike. That's Dave's Dave's adventure bike. I didn't, oh, you know, man, I think good. I'm I think I'm maybe 11 there. Maybe oh, 12. Oh, dude, that's classy. But I told you the and basket was, on the that front. That was in ni- 1947, roughly. No, that would be 1980 <laughs> Eight, 87, 88, somewhere in there, I think. Damn, so maybe dude, I was that's 12. That's so good. Oh, that's so good, dude. Of course, dude. Oh, you got to love the hairdo, man. right? 
Oh. <laughs> but but that, <laughs> that basket, man, let me tell you about that basket. Now, it was oh, super dude. handy. I remember being so embarrassed by that basket because I was a little boy that didn't want that, that handy basket. I mean, it, you know, it was yeah, handy. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you didn't want it like I mean on your bike you didn't want to you know you didn't want to ride your mom's bike because your mom's bike always had the basket on it. you're like come on mom right, on right. my own bike, right? So my first story of this bike is like I said as we wind this thing down. So Danny, my parents they bought this <laughs> they bought this this little gyro from from some of their good friends just bought a house. The people that bought that that had the house before them oh. left it there and they were like hey for one hundred twenty five dollars or whatever, <laughs> my parents bought it. They're helping their friends move inside, and I'm taking this bike all in front of these people's front yards. I'm doing stupid shit with it, just having a blast. And, dude, I rolled that thing. So there was a mirror on the other side. Oh, I did a man. flip. I kid you, you not. I flipped. Li- <laughs> I hit the front wheel into a hole, and the bike did a whole 180 flip in the air. I broke the oh, one mirror man. off, and I was like, if I, my parents know I just wrecked this thing, I'll, they will not let me take this home. So I took that mirror and just threw it out in a field somewhere. I was like <laughs> chucking that thing. like, And I remember my dad going, hey, wasn't there two mirrors on this thing? And I was like, don't know what you're talking about. Like, no, not at all. Nice. This is, But I will say this. The old gyro there, I literally, Danny, see the frame at the very bottom? I broke it in half. I, I literally oh, broke nice. it in half. Yeah. But, looks like you could do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And and I tro- I treated that like it was a Honda 125cc dirt bike. Like, dude, it, that yeah. little thing was tested. Like, if Honda ever said, hey, we want to test this thing and really know what it's capable of, I took it beyond its cap- capabilities. But, so, yeah, I, I, I that basket, I was like, man, this is kind of the worst thing ever. This doesn't look cool. But guess what I was doing at that age? I was driving myself back and forward to fourth to elementary school in that thing hey there you go dude i found a license plate on the side of a road a motorcycle license plate (laughs) i put it on that bike and and that's all they required was like the they didn't ever check anything i got a parent my my parents wrote me a note saying i could drive it to and from school because i remember the first day i got there the principal comes out hey uh what (laughs) <laughs> like he should that's pretty awesome that's pretty awesome dave yeah so so that was that was that was my that main was your intro into the adventure bike uh, yes. category i mean it, you you had storage on it uh it had three wheels yep i mean it's basically like a can am oh of course yeah yeah with uh instead of the basket being in the back or the sides like saddlebags yeah. it was out front that's pretty sweet dave so danny i thank you for taking us through uh through the dirt bikes here man i uh I feel like uh, the two people we have left on here are we're like they're hardcore dirt bike people, but uh, <laughs> these are things like we want to do, guys. It may not every show may not be like like just super adventure trucks or cars or whatever, but I have a, other interests. Danny has other interests, and that's what this this channel is about. Is is if it's got wheels, I said it one time before, and I mean it. I'm gonna do a review of a lawnmower one of these days, Danny, just because <laughs> it has wheels and it goes off road. Right? It better be a lawnmower with a street bike engine. That day. <laughs> That's all I gotta up. say. Oh, yeah. Danny, 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 Danny. So uh, <laughs> next week, I don't. We're gonna talk something fun. Uh, we've got to find another brand. We've we've talked Jeep. We've talked Ford oh, Broncos. I think maybe uh, there's that Ford Tremor out there. We'll talk about uh, maybe some more stuff. Yeah, the um, F-150 Tremor, which I scratched my head at why they needed a F-150 Tremor, but that's Ford. I don't know. Ford needs yeah, one we'll of everything. See. Um, yeah. but we'll talk that I'm down sure. the road. There's all, there's all kinds of stuff to chat about. So I will say Danny, I, in Chicago auto show, I spent some time in the, the Ford Tremor 250. It was a nice mm, vehicle. Yeah. It was nice. Yeah, I'm sure. 60 grand. And, uh, you got a little four inch radio screen in it. So well, that's cool. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. So guys from all things, four wheel drive, two wheel drive, or whatever you drive, this is your all terrain nation. And Danny, once again, buddy, thank you for coming on here. Thank you for, uh, for teaching me about motorcycles. Sharing, sharing my one wheel power adventures. Well, so Danny, what are we? Out. Peace, everybody. We will.